Okay, um, good evening everyone. Welcome to our photo book talk tonight uh, with me, Karen, and Victoria Lee, the second runner-up of Hong Kong Photo Book Dummy Award 2023. Also, Kurt Tong, the jury member of last year's Hong Kong Photo Book Dummy Award. I'm Karen from Goethe Gallery. Goethe Gallery is a photo book gallery and independent publisher based in Indonesia. This February, Gweri Gallery with Yayasan Riset Visual Mata Waktu, a non-profit organization that focusing on research, archiving, and publication related to visual arts, especially photography, we organize Pentas Buku Photo, or we call it in English, the photo book show. So for one month, we are showcasing all the shortlisted entries of the Hong Kong Photo Book Dummy Award 2023. These shortlisted photo book dummies will be traveling around the world. Before they arrived in Indonesia, they were showcased in India, in Goa and New Delhi. And after Indonesia, they will exhibit it in Cologne, Germany. Additionally, during the Pentas photo book, uh, Pentas book of photo this year, we are also showcasing curated photo books from four independent photo book publishers in Indonesia, namely Sokong, Rao Syndicate, Matawaktu, and myself from Gueri Gallery. For this year's Pentas Book of Photo, I specifically created photo books that focusing on the topic of gender and sexuality. So for those in Jakarta and surrounding areas, please come to Matawaktu to enjoy uh, photo books from Hong Kong Photo Book Grammy Award and curated selections uh, from four Indonesian publishers. And next, I would like to invite Hildi from Lumen Visum to share about Hong Kong Photo Book Dummy Award and how photo book making looks like in Hong Kong. And perhaps some of you are interested in submitting your dummy this year. So please uh, pay attention. So please pay attention to Hildi. And hi, Hildi. Oh. Uh, hi, the room is yours. Thank you. Thank you for uh, Carlos invitations and offer, offer and opportunities for me to introduce Hong Kong Photo Book Festival and Luminism. Uh, let's uh, show you our slide, my slide. Yeah. Uh, Hong Kong Photo Book Festival is one of the project of, um, of um, Luminism. Yeah. Um, the uh, photo book industry uh, is quite popular in uh, Europe and Asia, uh, Asia uh, Southeast Asia, but not yet in Hong Kong. Uh, so um, Luminism designs to promote uh, pro promote photo book cultures in Hong Kong. Start in uh, two two thousand and twenty at uh, two thousand and twenty. And it aims to um to connect uh photographers, artists, and a, a diverse range of uh publishers and independent groups from all over the world, and also uh, it, uh the festival serves as a uh, supporter of an emerging artist to gain exposure in the field of contemporary photography. Uh, during the festival. Oh, let me uh, introduce um the winners of um. Uh, Dummy Award uh, in 2023. And the, the uh, champion is uh, from uh, Ukraine, uh, Emma and Vodawa. And their books are named Photography uh, Firmly Enters the Everyday. And the first run up is uh, from Japan, Yoshika Fuji. Fuji. Uh, his book is uh, Hiroshima's Breath uh, Ever. Lasting show, and uh, the second runner up is uh, uh, Victoria, and the and her book is original uh, or origin, and she will uh, introduce uh, his book uh, latest, and uh, the um the fifth uh, the fourth book is uh, the, the uh, jury uh, special mentions, and uh, is from uh, Brazil, uh, Rafael Wakan. And his book is Tropical Tumor Mystery Tour. Uh, all the books are uh, uh, the first book video is on our uh, 
uh, YouTube uh, channel, you can uh, browse uh, on, on them. And after uh, we have, uh, besides um, the highlight of the uh, festival is our dummy award and the ex exhibition. And yeah, you can see the scenes of the exhibitions, uh, last editions. And besides our uh, showcase our uh, short list uh, in the exhibitions, uh, we are happy to have uh, our part uh, partner uh, from Singapore International uh, Festival and uh, Castle Dumbia Awards. Uh, they show their short list also in our exhibitions. And during the festival, uh, we have uh, several programs. One of them is a workshop, um, full book making workshops, and it's uh, there's two kind of workshops. One is for general public and the student, and the other one is uh, the master class. And the last one uh, we have conducted the master class is conducted uh, is hosted by uh, Kurt Tong. And uh, we also have a, a free day uh, book market in the weekend, one of the weekend, and uh, book launch. Uh, we also have uh, talks and artist sharings. Uh, last year we have um uh the artists from um Japan and uh Singapore and uh Ukraine uh they share their books uh, uh making practice and uh some uh, and the Singapore artists uh, um introduce uh her idea his ideas about the virtual uh, galleries and the uh, um. NFT, uh, how NFT uh, affects uh, his uh, photo book uh, publishing and uh, the share, sell, selling his uh, photo book. And after the exhibitions, uh, we will uh, start our tour exhibition. Uh, we our book has been showcased in uh, man, uh, more than 10 uh, cities and countries, like, uh, for example, uh, room uh, in Italy, uh, the Chatter Festival, and uh, uh, photo book with others in uh, Denmark, in Taiwan, and also uh, the photo uh, the, the photo Oslo Festival. And in uh, our gallery, uh, we have also have a photo book library. Uh, we have more than 3,000 books uh, in our gallery. Uh, especially we have uh, Hong Kong collections. Uh, we are building a uh, Hong Kong collections focused uh, on the Hong Kong photo pho uh, pho photographers and the uh, subjects about uh, Hong Kong. And we so also have uh, reading rooms uh, open to the public uh, for them to read uh, our to read uh, our photo books. And we have also a uh, small bookshops in our gallery, and uh, some um we we uh in regularly um we have some publications uh on on the left hand side we have a book uh, uh published uh, a few years ago about uh the uh political uh how artists uh. The uh, photographers and the artists uh, response to the political uh, issues and social movement. Uh, so uh, our presentation is here. Uh, stay connect with us. Uh, uh, our next uh, editions of uh, Dummy Award uh, Open Call will be posted uh, in in uh, September this year, and uh, the festival will be launched. Uh, in uh next year may or march so uh keep stay keep uh stay with me with us uh, thank you okay uh thank you so much Shildi, for your presentation yeah uh, hopefully many indonesians uh, will participate in this year's hong kong photo book dami award and yeah, I would like to share a little bit how photo book making uh, in Indonesia that often involves a diverse range of approach and styles. 
reflecting the rich cultural heritage and varied artistic extra practice in the country. So Indonesian photographers may draw inspiration from traditional themes, contemporary issues, and or personal experiences to create photo books that showcase the country's vibrant culture and diverse landscapes. In Indonesia, photo book publishing is often characterized by a growing community of independent publishers and self-publishing initiatives. While the major publishing houses do exist, nowadays I see many photographers choose to independently produce and distribute their photo books, allowing for greater creative control and flexibility in the content and design. So this grassroots approach to publishing has led to a thriving scene of photo book fairs, exhibitions, and collaborative projects, where photographers can showcase their work and connect with audience directly. So that's my two cents on how photo book making uh, in Indonesia. From a Gueri Gallery's perspective, we also uh, regularly conduct photo book making workshops that encourage and empower all participants to have more control when uh, producing their photo books from initial concept to craftsmanship in packaging their photo books and also to distribution. Okay, for the next one, I will invite Victoria Lee and Kurt Tong as our speakers tonight. And to everyone here on the Zoom or YouTube channel, during our discussion, please feel free to ask questions or drop your comments in the chat box. Victoria Lee is a Hong Kong photographer. Um, she is currently based in Hong Kong, who was studying at Leeds Arts University. Her photography focuses on migration, memory, and identity, with recent projects titled Origin and Where Do We Belong? which documenting her diasporic experience and sense of belonging in a foreign land. Victoria Lee won the second runner-up for Hong Kong Photo Book Award 2023. And Kurt Tong served as a jury member of Hong Kong Photo Book Award last year. He is an award-winning visual artist whose work explores his Chinese roots and understanding of his motherland. One of his projects titled Dear Franklin was exhibited as an immersive installation at Taipun Contemporary Museum in Hong Kong and selected as one of the top 10 for the books of 20, uh, 2022 by the Museum of Modern Art in New York. So please welcome Victoria Lee and Kurtong. How are you both? Good. <laughs> thank you for inviting us. Yeah, thank you for having, having us here. Thank you, thank you for your time. Victoria, I would like to ask you first. First of all, um, congratulations on your photo book and winning the second runner-up. I have read your photo book titled Origin, which is currently <coughs> at Mata Waktu. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting how you explore the meaning of immigrations using maple leaves that originate from Asia as a metaphor for your diasporic experience. So can you tell us more about the team explore in your photo book and what inspired you? Yeah, so uh, I think it's mainly inspired by my personal experience because I uh, traveled to England in 2020 to start uh, studying photography in England, uh, in Leeds especially. And then uh, being like an outsider, in a foreign land, I feel a bit out of place. And then I started to drill on the topic of like uh, self-identity and belonging. Uh, yeah, so uh, that's why uh, I my ideas kind of stems from a word in Chinese, uh, gan meaning root. Uh, so root is kind of like the most important part of a tree because it is related to the soil to the land which is which it comes from and then uh the chinese word also kind of links to uh, ones belonging to their motherland so um this is how i started and then uh because root is generally related to plants and then I started looking at uh, plants in England that would 
somehow relate to my uh hit, to my cultural background and then uh, after doing some research on uh plants that i uh, plants and trees that i found uh near Leeds, near where i lived maple is kind of uh, maple is the species that i found is most related to my personal background because they are suspicious 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 to be uh, originated from a uh, asian area and then traveled all the way to uh, the western side just like how i traveled from hong kong all the way to england to study photography yeah and then uh because i think um migration is a uh, kind of a phenomenon a lot of hong kong people is experiencing uh, that time uh i kind of want to make this book to uh strike a chord with anyone that is experiencing similar things so that they can um uh, understand that they're not the only one that is uh experiencing such hardships and also i think that uh migration is something that you can experience in multiple aspects multiple perspective so uh, uh you can see i am using a lot of diff like various kind of method to uh, touch on this topic uh like i'm not directly photographing maple tree just at just as trees but i'm uh, using ways to uh, recreate them uh yeah so i can show them uh so this is probably one of the more direct uh way of me like really photographing a tree and then um uh, maybe like these are some pictures i found from the uh, hong kong public library online database uh about uh some archival image showing Hong Kong scientists uh, researching on plants. And then also um, something like uh, something like these. These are actually uh, papers that I made from maple tree leaves because uh, I re uh, did some research and find out that you can actually make papers from plants like something like reusable paper and then these are some of the attempts i tried to make uh yeah and then also like creating a uh, still life uh from leaves that i collected and yeah just a bunch of different ways for me to present and also explore this topic and find out my relation uh, between the plants and uh, my experience in moving different places. Yeah. Okay, well, it's interesting to know that uh, you made an attempt to create a handmade paper from uh, maple leaves. Um, yeah, uh, I think it's inter also interesting if you maybe for the next uh, edition, you can add that handmade maple leaves yeah. uh, I know it's, it's, it's quite it took uh, it will take a lot of effort to do that yeah it's also a bit fragile because it's really just leaves hanging on there without any glue or like it's not industrially made it's not uh like thick and together professionally so it would probably fall off in pieces after the time pass so yeah it's quite a precious little thing <laughs> i see i see and also in your photo books uh you mentioned that uh you were looking to find a place to settle while yeah. you were finding there and your family tried to buy a flat to live in but the deal was delayed multiple times and failed in the end yeah so this is like the other like the second part of the story is that um, because my family uh, wants to 
find me a place to settle down in uh, while I was studying there. So they tried to acquire a place for me to live in, but due to various reasons, the deal kept on delaying and delaying. Uh, you can imagine uh, I have moved places for over 12 times in two years, which is like kind of crazy that you move every two months you can think like that uh, and then the reason for that is because uh, when we first bought the place uh, we have like um estimated time for us to move in but because of some reasons maybe COVID or anything uh, the date uh, delayed for two months let's say and then for those two months I have to find a new place to live in uh, hoping that I can move into the house uh, after two months, but maybe uh, but just before the deadline, I have the bad news again. Uh, it's being delayed another two months, so I have to keep keep on this process of uh, finding a place, uh, waiting for it to uh, waiting for it to be done, and then knowing it's not gonna be done, and then finding a new place again. So it happened like that over and over for more than two years, and then like the even worse thing is that the whole whole thing was terminated in the end. So I've got nothing, and then now I'm back in Hong Kong again. Yeah. Wow, it it takes a lot of yeah yeah and then i think because of such um cycle of uh moving in settling down and then finding a new place again it really uh frustrates me in like emotionally frustrates me and also makes me question a lot of what it means to be home so like during those two 2.5 years is kind of like a trauma for me to move house because it's so so uh it's such a big thing to happen and then yeah and then in those past two years I couldn't really say that I'm going back home because I don't consider those 12 places as as my home uh in any kind of sense so it like home is really important for me to have like uh in terms of the sense of belonging so that's why i'm like my whole moving experience is kind of like uh inspiration for me to make this book happen yeah i see okay yeah thank you for sharing oh uh, yeah it takes a lot of effort i think to uh, to hear your story yeah okay victoria uh let me ask her and i will get back to you okay hi Kurt. um i'm wondering as one of the jury members uh how do you think uh, the entries for this year's award reflect current trends or themes in contemporary photography did you notice any recurring themes or subjects across the submissions and if so what do you think they signify about the current state of photography well, that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of questions. Uh, well, let me get back to the first point, which is: Did I see a, a trend? Um, I mean, I think certainly, um, I mean, as you can see, the winner. <laughs> there was definitely current affair was kind of fairly heavy on a few of the books. Uh, and but, but the, for people who don't know, the winning book was about uh, two Ukrainian photographers who have been collecting uh, vernacular photographs from Russia for many years, and kind of it's their point of view how Russia has been. And the everyday life has been infiltrating between the two borders, kind of years before the current current war. Um, and I think, like, had it not because of the, the invasion and the war, that book might not have been kind of picked up on by a lot of juries. But uh, in terms of because it was entered last year, it was very current. So a lot of the juries kind of picked it quite high up on the on the list. Um, I think, kind of overall, with themes, uh, it's it's. I mean, it was it was nice to see. Uh, because I'm kind of bunching up all, the, all a lot of things together. Because I, I remember seeing the first year, this was the second edition, um, which was quite as, the first edition was very new, so it, it wasn't that many um, entries. But I think by the time second edition, we had, I mean, it was, it was quite, it took me two afternoons to go through the books properly. 
Um, so it was really nice to see. I mean, the, the, the entry was very diverse and it was really from all over the world. Um, the only thing I really noticed, uh, it's a, and, and this has been a theme, I think, across all the books as well. A lot of books became the very personal point of views. Um, and certainly in Victoria's book, it's, it's about her experience, um, kind of how to talk about the Chinese diaspora through just her experience. Um, a lot of books is about kind of people dealing with mental health issues, again, with their own family members or themselves. So that's definitely the theme that's come over. It dominates a lot of other books. I mean, I wouldn't say kind of majority of them were, but you notice a lot of books have becoming about a personal experience. Um, sorry, what's the second question? <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, did you notice any recurring themes or subjects across the submissions? Uh, and if so, what do you think they signify about the current set of photography? As you mentioned uh, previously, uh, more about like personal uh, approach uh, that, uh, in photo, uh, photo books that uh, you have selected. Yeah, so yeah, so, so I think, yeah, again, like, so the current affair really led, led the way. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I think I answered the question with, uh, it definitely, again, I think mental health, definitely, there was quite a few books that was dealing with mental health, whether it's, uh, they were the carer of the, of the person who has mental health issues, or they were themselves, who was going through maybe depressions. Uh, and I think, it definitely, I think, with uh, certainly, with, I think, um, having done Yumi's workshop, uh, and uh, be very familiar with kind of very tactile handmade books, it seems to be a way for people to deal with issues as well. It's like beyond just making art, it's a nice way to kind of put everything together and kind of really put a physical kind of physicality to an issue and try to portray, kind of express themselves through photo books. So I think that's definitely something I saw in, in the entries. Yeah, yeah, more, more like uh, craftsmanship uh, like, uh, on the photo books. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's unique and very authentic uh, for me especially. So yeah, about the selection process, um, can you describe more um, the selection process for choosing the finalists and the winners of the award? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, so uh, we were given, so <laughs> this is somebody who's listening. Uh, so uh, I mean, I, I wasn't involved in kind of the the, the judging criteria. So we, when we arrived, uh, we were given um, a score sheet uh, to score books out of 30, uh, at 10 points allocated to artistry, uh, which really, I think, is down to the kind of the photography itself. Uh, Ten points were down to the editorial quality, so that's much more much more about the design, uh, the sequencing, and the concept of the book. Uh, and ten, and ten point is allocated to technical feasibility, uh, and that's kind of where I was kind of playing around a bit. <laughs> uh, I think it was kind of meant to. Uh, Maybe it was kind of from the first edition, it was uh, people were looking to publish the winning book, but this time we were much more looking at whether the book can be produced in more numbers. But I think like we, Victoria mentioned already, that's not really why people make books anymore. Not like, you know, people used to make books to have fine publishers. So that was important. We have to consider whether it can be mass produced. But I think when we were looking at the books, we knew some books were probably just going to be handmade in a small edition. So that kind of really became kind of we allocated points towards kind of craftsmanship and also kind of design. So uh, that changes slightly. Um, and in terms of kind of how we came to the finalists and winner, uh, so I was lucky there were five of us uh, on the juries. Um, and I think only three of us were able to see the book in person, um, which kind of, it does make a difference, especially with, like I said, Victoria's book, you can see the little pages with the text. It's, it's a very different experience to read it in person than to see it on the YouTube videos. Um, so we were kind of all given, I mean, I spent, I, I originally thought I can go through all the books in one day and end up having to go back again. So it took me two days. Um, for me personally, I always look at the book first and then I can't go back to the statements. I want to see if the book can speak for itself before knowing what it's about. But I always do look at both uh, and we will give, kind of give score accordingly. Um, and again, I think, if I'm not, I hope I'm not speaking out of terms. Um, so yeah, with me, I mean, me being a bookmaker myself, I, I think my preference were probably more narrowed than perhaps uh, some of the jury who was a uh, former director of a photo festival, uh, who was an educator. Um, so they might have kind of more welcoming different. So my, my, my maybe my kind of judging was slightly more blinked than others. Uh, and for example, like with Yin Yao, who was the Chinese publisher, um, he managed to go through the books in like three hours. And he just said like, he sees so many books in his everyday life. I think he can know what kind of what books work and what doesn't it's very much quicker than me. So I think we all kind of went away where we had our different prejudices and different preferences. And we all came up with the scores. Um, and basically, I think 
we all picked our top 20s in terms of adding up the scores. We just added up the scores um, and it was just decided. So luckily, there were a lot of overlaps. Um, so some books would just go to the top, like if people from different walks of life would find it good. But I think it was also nice that because we we're from different walks of life, there was definitely one jury. Uh, by his own admission, he said he wasn't an expert or very much into photo books. And his selections were very different. Actually, his top 20 was almost completely different to the others. And, and and initially, it's like, come on, you're ruining the scoring system. But actually, that was a good thing. Because uh, photo books shouldn't just appeal to the people who are already photo book geeks. You know, people who are just into photography, they should be appealed to them as well. And I think he served as, as that voice. Um, so we had our points added together. And then we met on Zoom to have basically fight it out over the top. I mean, the point system kind of worked. It, it's kind of self-explanatory anyway. The kind of highest points books tend to float to the top, and we try to decide the the kind of the rankings, uh, which is, was wasn't always easy. Especially it was done by online, so it was um, it, it wasn't it wasn't the most organic, but we got there in the end. I see. Okay, so uh, you mentioned about like craftsmanship and also the personal approach uh, when you are looking for uh, like in photo books. So. Um, what were some stand-up qualities or elements that you look for in the photo books? But before you answer that, I would like to share my opinion about uh, one of the shortlisted, uh, shortlisted entries that also uh, caught my attention. Uh, let me share my screen. Mm. Okay, so uh, this one, um, I think uh, he won the second prize. Uh, it was created by Yoshikatsu Fuji, titled Hiroshima Grabs Everlasting Flow, which won uh, the second prize for the Hong Kong Photo Award uh, 2023. So this photo book to me has a really strong narrative concept uh, and elements that successfully come together uh, in a cohesive and engaging uh, photo book making it compelling to explore history in a contemporary way. So this photo book encapsulates memories of his grandmother, who was a survivor of the atomic bombing in Hiroshima during the World War II. The photo book serves as an effort to preserve memories and reject forgetting the tragedy that occurred at that time. So in this photo book, there are some sections that use thin paper for the pages, creating a translucent effect so that um, the images on the next page are visible when I'm reading uh, the reverse page. So I felt that it was like building layers of memories that finally recall the tragic events of the past. And there are also some photographs depicting the present time from the same locations in the past. So I think this is how Yuki, uh, Yushi Katsu builds emotions and messages that intertwine between the past that are packaged with a contemporary style. Yeah, that's my point of view. So yeah, back to Kurt uh, to answer. <laughs> what were some stand-up qualities or elements that you look for in the photo booth um, besides the craftsmanship and also the optional approach? Yeah, I mean, I mean um, I'm glad you brought up uh, yeah, Yoshi's Yoshi sound. Uh, I've met him a few times. He's he's a very he's a very skilled bookmaker for sure. Um, I think what uh, definitely when we were looking at the books, um, I would say most things to look out for is the images. I think sometimes because photo books have become such a different beast now, it's about kind of the whole concept and design. Uh, people forget it's still called a photo book, <laughs> and and the photographs should still be half decent, <laughs> um, or at least kind of the collection of photographs. Um, I think that's the main thing. So I think there were definitely some books that were so conceptually tight, uh, but perhaps the photograph wasn't taken that well. I mean, that was definitely something I was looking out for. Um, and from another point of view, it was definitely fresh ideas. I mean, again, like the early hours, I already said kind of a lot of books is kind of personal point of view. Um, so in a way you could get a little bit kind of kind of um, tired of seeing when, when you're looking at like hundred books and you've seen 40 of those. Uh, so there was definitely some books that was really jumping out at me. Um, the, the the jury mentioned book, the one with the with the murder novel, um, I think it's called Rafael Renito. I think he just won the dummy award as well. So congratulations to him. Um, so that's, a, again, it's a very different take on a photo book. It's, it's acting as like a semi-fictional uh, murder, murder 
novel uh, about the Brazilian election. I may be getting the details wrong, uh, but the whole design of the book works like a graphic novel. Uh, so straight away, there was a very fresh concept that kind of took, took me in. Uh, and then sometimes it's something much more simple than that. Um, there's a book that was shortlisted, um, get the name wrong, uh, by Sunik Kim uh, called The Wave. Um, it's on the shortlist. It wasn't one of the top. Um, I really, I was really so drawn to it because it was talking about um, old, old ladies with perm hair in Korea. Uh, and it was talking about how kind of when Korea was coming up from his kind of this economic slum, having a perm is seen as a status symbol. Uh, but a lot of the older ladies still hold on to that to that to that mentality. Uh, so she's really photographing people. I think it's him actually. Uh, he was really photographing um, kind of older ladies with perm, and I've never heard of that. So that, that's something that's so refreshing has never heard of. Uh, definitely jumped out at me as well. Um, and I think finally, with I think with design is another thing because. Um, and Victoria's book is kind of really well put together with a lot of features. And definitely Yoshi Sound's book are so kind of so many bells and whistles <laughs> uh, with his design. But it all works. I think that's the main thing. Um, everything is considered. Like he didn't use the thin paper just because it looks good. Like you mentioned, he used it because it kind of runs through the text and there's a, there's a concept to it. Uh, there were definitely a number of handful of books that was very well crafted and designed for the sake of having those designs. Uh, there were holes in it just... So it looks good. There were paper just so it fits, flicks good. I think they were, I mean, that should be bowed down, I think. <laughs> um, because I think, especially with, um, again, coming back to Yumi Goto's workshop, her books were winning so many awards. Um, people are drawn to, oh, if I make a book with all those things, that will win me awards. So people kind of do those things unnecessarily. Uh, and definitely that would have the adverse effect. Uh, effect. So that's something else we're looking out for as well. Don't over-design for the sake of over-design. Uh, so that's my three points. So, so photography, good idea, and design that's right for the concept. <laughs> I see, I see. So yeah, I take notes uh, on that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, Victoria. Uh, I go back to Victoria. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm just curious, uh, what was your creative process <clears throat> like while producing the images for your photo book? And what message or emotion were you aiming to convey uh, through the overall design and presentation of your photo? Mm -hmm. um, so my creative process, as I said, uh, is mainly about uh, having as much uh, ways to tackle the issue. Uh, so uh, beside uh, making papers from the leaves, uh, taking pictures of the actual tree. Um, I'm also using different ways to uh, present uh, the places I've been living in, um, such as this is the map of the city I lived, uh, Leeds, and then uh, I'm using this these white dots to kind of point out where I've been living over the past two years, and also maybe uh, not just using my lens, like like not using my camera as the main uh, main tool to make uh, photography or art. Uh, also, these might be oh, these are like some screen captures from Google Map, uh, showing places or buildings that I've been living in like uh, these highlighted part uh yeah it's just about uh creating and using different ways to talk about uh, migration because it's such a complex and um different experience to everyone uh, people might be excited to go to a new like to go to a new place to live in some might be depressed because they don't uh they're not used to living in a new place it's just um it's just about how i view this experience as a person like i have ups and downs i feel sometimes i feel happy being in england sometimes not um maybe it's because of the weather whatever so it's yeah it's really a personal project yeah it's it's just um 
kind of subjective and might maybe not everyone will agree to what I'm ta- saying about uh, talking about, but it's just how I interpret my experience using photography. Yeah. I, I I couldn't agree more because yeah, when like a photo book uh, had been created, uh, the audience have their own interpretations uh, on the photo books as well. So uh, were there any specific photographers or artists who influenced your work on this project? Um, yeah, so because I'm interested in books, so mainly uh, things that in, like the stuff that inspires me are mainly books. I've bought one today with me. Uh, this one is called Basti Diosa, uh, which is by two Italian artists talking about uh, the olive tree in Italy, uh, southern Italy, I think, and then how this uh, bacteria called Basti Diosa invaded the plants and affect a lot of people living there. Uh, the reason for me to choose this book is because it it has a lot of uh, elements like how uh, the ways to present one uh, one event or one narrative using different kind of ways like they have uh, using flash photography uh, using like collage uh, illustration and also like some more uh, still life stuff, uh, microscopic photography, that kind of ways. Yeah, so it's kind of like inspiring me how I can approach my subject in different ways, yeah. Wow, interesting. Uh, yeah, um, to see uh, the correlations between the artists that influence you and also the photo books that you have created. Yeah. So yeah. And what do you hope viewers uh, or audience will take away from experience your photo? Um, as I said, it's much about echoing with people that are facing uh, similar difficulties that I have during that time. Uh, I'm quite like lucky that uh, I'm I escaped from that horrible experience now. But maybe there are still some uh, Hong Kong people out there facing uh, some challenging situations. So I I hope what I'm experiencing and uh, what I uh, am, what message I have in the book can help them to get through uh, whatever thing they encounter. Yeah. I see, I see. So I'm wondering, so did you face any challenges during the, the creation of your photo book? And how did you overcome them? Um, I think this is like probably the f- first time I'm really making a act like a proper book book thing. So, uh, I have to consult a lot of people about, uh, like uh, starting from the beginning, how to print proper photos how to make a hardback book cover and how to like book buying stuff, like doing stitches and stuff. And then like, I have to, um, I think I made four or five dummy version of this, this project just to test out how the editing, the sequencing works. And I have to show those dummies to a lot of my friends or like uh my lecturers from my university just to uh go through the dummy and see if the narrative is working and see how they uh absorb the information I'm looking to convey so I have to make tweaks uh, between each dummy to get this final version although it might not be the best one but it's just a quite a long process for me to get to this final thing I see I see 
Okay. Um, so yeah, it's important. I think when uh, we created a photo book, uh, yeah, we can consult our photo book to some like uh, eligible people uh, to have their advice as well uh, regarding the concept and also the materials uh, and the, uh, the, the the book forms uh, itself. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I think um, we... Uh, but from my from from my point of view, uh, we don't have like to ask many people because we will get confused. Uh, many people will have their uh, own different perspectives. Uh, I think, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and from um the audience here, if you have any questions or comments, please drop uh on the chat box, and I will be happy to 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 read uh your questions and also your comments. Okay. Uh, get back to Kurt. Um, as a jury, as you mentioned, uh, from five juries, uh, like there was one jury who has a different uh point of view to select like uh twenty uh best of the the dummies. So maybe can you discuss like any other specific challenges or debates that arose during the jury deliberations? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm allowed, right? <laughs> so, uh, um, yeah, well, one of the main things, I think, the, uh, first off the bat, uh, I think it was definitely a, a cultural thing. It's interesting when I'm giving the points, and I can say this, I think, um, us being Chinese, we're like, you know, like 80% is the top grade you'll ever give the best book, right? Uh, but for the European judges, it was like, oh, the best book gets 100%. So straight away, the, the, even for the same book, like the top number one book for European jury, it's already got more points than my number one book. So that's a very much a cultural mis, kind of misalignment. Uh, but that's, I mean, that, that's easily fixable in the future. Um, and in terms of kind of really choosing, like when we we're deliberating, fighting the books, um, I think it's a case of really kind of takes the juries to be kind of strong and support the books they want. Um, and I think we already mentioned in the before the Ukrainian book definitely keep rising to the top. I mean, I'm happy to say, I mean, I can put my hand out and say, I, I don't think it's the best book <laughs> personally uh, in terms of the books that was available, purely judging on the books. But I can totally understand why it's being shortlisted for so many prices in the last year, uh, because it's so much in our mindset, it's so current. Um, so that's something that was a factor, I think, for sure. Uh, another factor was definitely... Um, we were debating about kind of representation as well. I think that's a very hot topic at the moment. But again, kind of balancing that with, do we just show certain minority group for the sake of showing them even the book is not good? So that was definitely something we discussed quite a lot uh, when we were deliberating. Uh, but in the end, I think it was quite easy to see kind of which book, which books floated to the top. Um, but also, again, one another thing was with, with kind of um, uh, with, um, uh, the, 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 the Hiroshima graph. Um, I think also uh, one of the jury wasn't sure it was mass produced or handmade. Um, so that was kind of the misunderstanding of the juries whether, um, I mean, I knew, I, I met him, I know he spent hours making the books, but for another jury, it was like, oh, no, that's obviously made in the factory. It's so perfect. Uh, so it's kind of like, how much do we give weighting to the craftsmanship of the book? You know, we already mentioned only 10, 10 points allocated to the, to the concept, to the photography. Um, do we like, so having a really well-crafted book, is that going to give it more weighting than some big, some book that's kind of pure conceptually well, well, well executed. Uh, so I think those are the kind of thing we were debating uh, quite a lot. Uh, in the end, I think Ukraine won because <laughs> it was a very hot topic. Yeah, 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 for sure. So were there any like common strengths or weaknesses among the submissions that you noticed during the review process? Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, we can uh, let's maybe take a take a minute to talk about the the, the books that didn't get shortlisted <laughs> and, and the reason why I think that might be a good thing. Um, yeah, I mean, the, I mean, it's it's obvious to see with the same like you know, the top twenty. I think eight eight or nine of the books is also in the Castle Dummy Award. So I think certainly there's a group of bookmakers who are making very good dummies and they're sending it to all the awards and they're definitely the best book. Uh, if I were to kind of look back to the, a lot of the submission who didn't score very high, uh, I think there's also a lot of people who are just keen to make photo books, but they're still in the learning stage. So um, I would say the photography often is very decent. They, they really can take a photo book, but it's lacking the concept. There, there was no, it's, it's much more like a portfolio. 
uh, how we saw photo books maybe even 40 years ago. It's a very nice showcase of books, but I think these days it definitely doesn't get picked up by book, uh, book competitions. Uh, it's much it's book has to convey a message and, and, and there's a concept to it, a design element that supports it rather than just showcasing good photography. Um, I think that's something that we, I would say for people who are kind of thinking into entering, uh, it's not a simple showcase of photographs. Um, and there were definitely books that were so underdeveloped. I think another thing is because it is a dummy award, um, so at what point you enter the book <laughs> to a dummy award, uh, you know, like with the book, some books are the final sellable artist book and some are dummy and some are still kind of being developed. Uh, and I think certainly if, um, if I can find the, one of the books that uh, stood out to me, um, Forever Mine uh, and Anna Bedenska, um it was a good book, but you can tell it's like, like Victoria said, it's, if you're going to make 10 dummies, this maybe is dummy number five, but there's so much potential in it. So that's why kind of we picked it up, but there was definitely room for improvement. So I think with dummy awards as well, it's very hard to gauge and it changes with the judges and the trend. Do you submit the final version? Is that going to rise to the top or do you submit something that shows so much potential and maybe the jury or who is the publisher might want to pick up on it and go, well, I want to work with that artist and let's develop that book together. So I think it's definitely, there's no answer to it. There's no right answer, but I think it's a very gray line in terms of having dummy awards when the books, a lot of books are not dummies, they're, they're the final product. Yeah, yeah, forever mine. I also I like that book as well. It's about like child custody after the parents uh, separations uh, in, in, in Japan. It's really interesting. Yes, yeah. And I think it's still relevant until today. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, but as a book, it's, 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 I mean, it's very far from being ready to be, to be printed or published. So, um, but I like that. But that's why W awards are here, I guess. Yeah, 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 the concept is uh is, is very good, yeah. But as you as you say that yeah, it's it's far or from uh, ready. So um from your uh, perspective, um so do you believe like to this kind of awards, uh like this one, uh play in supporting and promoting emerging photographers? Oh, emerging for um <laughs> no, I think I think I think definitely does, especially um with it being a local. Um, I mean it's. And it's not a local, I mean, it's locally run, but Hildi has worked very hard. It's very, it's very much international. It's been traveling, uh, but it's definitely, I, there was a lot of Hong Kong books as well, which is very nice to support the local, local area. A lot of, there was quite a few Southeast Asian books. There's a lot of Hong Kong books. Um, Cause I think even entering this competition, it's a big investment, even though there's no entry fee. Once you made the book, that's, you know, you're talking 80, hundred US dollars to make it. And then the postage is another 50 US dollars. So just, entering a book and you're spending 100, 150 US dollars, which is a lot of money. <laughs> so I think with price is locally run and then it gets to tour around. It's a really nice opportunity for emerging or kind of younger photographers to almost dip the toes into the business that is photo books uh, and photo book competition. Uh, and I think also in reverse, um, um, Hildy mentioned that the festival has has partners. Uh, so the fact that the Castle Dummy books come to Hong Kong as part of the exhibition in Singapore, uh, that's also really nice to bring books that kind of made by kind of well-known photographers as well uh, to be introduced to the local local emerging photographers so they get to see in the physical copies uh, of kind of really good dummy books as well. So I think that's, the, that's in, in, in that sense, the prize is really important. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, exactly. Uh, I I agree with you. When we create like a dummy for for one, actually, it 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 takes a lot of costs uh, to produce um uh, and also send it to to abroad. So yeah, uh, get back to Victoria. Um, I think um we will enter the end of our discussions. I think from the audience, do you have any questions? Uh, maybe before we uh end our discussions. Please feel free uh, to drop your questions and comments uh, in the chat box. So for Victoria, um, are there any future projects you are considering based on the experience of creating your photo books? Maybe uh, that you can share with the audience. Um, not really at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I have, I have like a new book. Uh, that 
been published with a friend of mine, uh, which is like uh, a Hong Kong Hong Kong art artist that is running a like a publishing house in London right now. And then it's called Book Sandwich Club. Uh, he does prints in Rizzograph. So I've I've made a book with him uh of my of my pre previous project uh using Rizzograph, which is like a really cool way of printing stuff. And then I think beyond that, maybe not so much at the moment, by, but I'm looking forward to uh, making new books in the future. Uh, as I said to Karen just now, uh, Karen just now, I'm a bit of a person who likes to control uh, things I <laughs> make. So I think self-publishing is the kind of option that I would go for in the future, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I see also many photographers here in Indonesia. Uh, they like more into like self publishing than than go into like a major publishing houses. So they can like control um from concept until the um distribution process. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah, to Kurt. Uh, what advice would you give to photographers? Uh, looking to submit their work to future editions of the Hong Kong uh, Dummy work. Uh, yeah, no, I, th I mean, I think it goes not just to Hong Kong Dummy, but all competition Dummy Awards. Okay. I think the most important thing is make the best book you feel you can, uh, rather than kind of chasing what's trendy and thinking that I mean, judges change every year, the trend change every year. So there's no point chasing that kind of golden goose. Uh, you always kind of look within yourself to kind of, your the best idea for your book and make that version rather than thinking I should have that design feature I should have that cover I should have that material um get feedbacks from people I think Victoria already mentioned about getting in tutors and then you mentioned don't ask too many people I think yeah I think I agree you have a few really trusted people that you respect and then you know give good advice and if they're willing uh, sometimes it's nice to pay them as well because <laughs> I, I get approached by a lot of people and I say, well, I haven't got time. So if you, you know, if, they, if there's like an arrangement for like a mentorship session, mm -hmm. uh, respect those and you get feedbacks and at both parties is concentrated for that hour, two hours and they get a lot get done uh, to keep developing and changing elements of the book to the final product that you're happy with. Um, and I would probably finally say like, I would, kind of coming from someone who always looked back in history to make books don't chase chase the trendy story because i think there's been a lot of kind of memes going around about ukrainian projects and now crying because everyone's concentrating on on israeli and palestinian projects so it's no point chasing chasing what's trendy always kind of just find the best project for yourself and make your perfect book that's my advice okay Okay, uh, yeah, thank you so much for your advice. Uh, and I think like many uh, Indonesians here also like to create more photo books. So uh, the first one uh, we have to, I mean, yeah, try your best uh, for your photo books. And also, yeah, the concept and the materials, uh, that is an important thing. And I think Indonesia, uh, like besides photo books, uh, we also have like in Indonesian photographers create uh, a zine, uh, photo book, uh, a zine because uh, like the cost is cheaper than like, a photo book itself. Okay, um, I think uh, we are uh, at the end of the discussions. Uh, do you have like any message or advice you want to give to the audience tonight before we end our discussion? Maybe from Hilde, Kurt, uh, and Victoria. Uh, no, if, if I want to say anything, enjoy the process. It's 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 a lot of hair pulling, but you have to enjoy it. Uh, otherwise, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, I would say uh, kind of the same. Don't think about it. Just do it, and then start the process. That is the best way to. Yeah, just play around with stuff and enjoy. <laughs> okay. Hilly, do you want to add some? 
Yeah, same as Victoria, just enjoy mm -hmm. to do to do to do the uh, for the book. And uh, when you have a uh, uh, for the book, uh, come and join our award. <laughs> and if you have time, come to um, visit our festival too. It's in September. If not, if, uh, if not... Uh, the open course uh, announcement will be made in uh, September or October, and the festival uh, will be uh, held in uh, March or May. It's subject to the availability of the venue. I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so yeah, hopefully we can meet each other um, uh, in the next opportunity. So yeah, thank you so much for your time and uh, I hope uh, success for your next project um, or work. See you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye.